Well, the field of the gold really begins um, as early as, as 1513, when Henry VIII does his first invasion of France um, personally, and is able to conquer the town of Terrawana and um, the, the city of Tournai, um, and really tries to establish himself as a, a major player on the world stage through uh, this conquest of a couple of towns in France. Obviously, what he was trying to do was conquer the whole of France, but that didn't quite work out. And by the time, to cut a long story short, by the time uh, he's in a position to try and have another go, uh, his allies, Ferdinand of Aragon and the Emperor Maximilian, um, are no longer interested in this, this project of a joint attack on the uh, Kingdom of Louis France. It's, it's Henry, and, and I think a very important person in the story is Cardinal Wolsey, who comes up with the idea that instead of making war, if you haven't got any allies, if you haven't got money, which Henry doesn't, why not make peace in a magnificent way? And the first time they do that is when Mary Tudor, that is the sister, not the daughter of Henry VIII, uh, a very young, very pretty woman of uh, still in her teens, is married to Louis XII to form the first Anglo-French alliance of Henry's reign in 1514. She's the first and only English princess to become Queen of France in 1514. That all works very splendidly as far as Henry and Lindsay are concerned because the Tudors are seen to be a powerful international um, um, dynasty. However, it does not very long because of well, Louis XII. She married to him in October 1514, and he dies in January 1515, bringing to the throne a much younger, more dynamic monarch, Francis I, who within nine months of his accession completely outdoes Henry VIII by conquering not just a couple of towns in France, but an entire duchy in northern Italy, the duchy of Milan. And it becomes, the, I suppose, the, what Henry wanted to be, the uh, most glamorous, attractive, successful European prince of his day. And over the course of the next couple of years, um, between 1515, when Francis becomes king, and 1518, um, Henry and Wolsey are desperate to do anything to try and stop this man from outplancing Henry even further. Uh, and they decide to go back to basics and say, well, if we can't stop him by, by battle, because they can't, then why not try and make an octopus between England or France and an entire European peace um, to enable Henry to pose as the peacemaker rather than the warmonger. And that is, that is the, 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 the as tight as I can put it, that's the background to what happens in 1582, um, which is the Treaty of Universal Peace. Pope Leo X has been very concerned about the, the rise of the Ottomans in the East and the threat as he perceives it to Western Europe and wants to bring together European princes in a, a truce. But Cardinal Wolsey is one step ahead of him and says, look, we, we don't need a truce. What we need is an international league of cooperation between European princes. And the best prince to lead that is not Francis I or anybody else. It's my king, Henry. And that, um, amazingly, is what actually happens. In 1518, uh, most of the principalities, republics and principalities of, of Western Europe come together at, in London and agree the Treaty of Universal Peace. It, it's a bit like the League of the United Nations almost, you know, 500 years ago, um, next year, in fact. Um, and the linchpin, the kind of thing, pulls the whole thing together, is a new alliance between England and France. And that alliance is secured by a personal meeting between Henry VIII and Francis I. And that is why, 1518, they agree to this meeting. It's meant to happen a year later in 1519, but because of the death of the Emperor Maximilian and the election in his place of the Emperor Charles V, um, of course, the, the, the third player in this, um, the two kings don't meet. But, but eventually, the climate is right enough that by the summer of 1520, uh, they come together uh, at this event, which we now know in history as the Fiend of Buckle Gold. 